All right, and that song orients our next conversation, which is actually our first conversation th this uh, Thursday morning, of course. We look at matters, music, and specifically center our focus on the space of women in the music industry or gospel space, so to speak. My guest, Rose Buyanzi, who is a gospel artist, will definitely be helping us unpack that and so much more. Welcome to the program, Rose. Thank you. That song that just uh, played on Nisa Mehe, tell us more. Tell us something about the song. Okay, Nisa Mehe is a song that I did in 2021. As in, according to me, nilikuwa nimepitia mambo mengi sana. There is a time I went in Jordan to work in Middle East na nikapitia mengi sana. So wakati natoka kule Jordan na fika Kenya, nilikuwa na machungu mengi sana katika moyo wangu na nikasema kwamba i will punish these people because hawa kunipa pesa nikasema nitaenda hata ukambani nikafanya hata wakule matawi ndio wanipe hizo pesa zangu so nikasikia Mungu ananinenea ananiambia just forgive them so ndio maana huu wimbo nimewasamea ukajitokeza and then pia kuna watu kadha wakadha walikuwa wame nikosea maisha ni mwangu so nikasikia nikasikia ni uzito mungu ananiambia kwamba just forgive them so that you can go far mm. and that's why I came up with that song mewasamehe this was in 2021 in 2021 so you've actually been in the Middle East you've worked there yes just let, let's digress a bit let's just digress a bit and uh I want you to give us a bit of your perspective. Why? Because we've had so many stories about the Middle East. In fact, uh, the Foreign Affairs Ministry it look into ways in which we can see how we can get into an agreement between maybe Kenya mm -hmm. and this Gulf state so that we reduce or see better working conditions mostly for our girls and even some men eh, mm -hmm. who actually go there to work kule. Juni maramingi tumefanya story nyingi za kwamba kama mtu hajarudi kama hajalipwa basi ni atarudia kiwa maiti yeah. kidogo tu experience yako ilikuwa vipi working in the gulf in the middle east okay my experience was was not that good mm. nilifika kule and uh, nilikuwa naenda kufanya kazi hotelini that's how ilikuwa hapa kenya nika sign contract mm. wakaniambia naenda kufanya kazi hotelini and then kufika there narushwa kwa nyumba ya mtu I'm going to work. So they are, just 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 hold. So the agreement to kitoka Kenya mm -hmm. ato kitafuta hii kazi ilikuwa yeah. unaenda kufanya kazi as in the hotel industry because yeah, in hotel. that's what you had wanted and that's what you agreed on. Yeah. But ukifika pale things changed. Eh? Things changed. Ile contract wanararua they are telling me you are going to work in the house as a housemaid. Mm -hmm. And then I told them no this can't happen. Miss Jawai fanya hivyo. Mm -hmm. Let me go back, go back to Kenya. So they are there telling me ukishafika umefika you are going to work in this house and ata the 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 owner of the the one who was taking ladies there mm. who was recruiting uh, ladies ameka pale ananishikia pistol ananiambia i can shoot you ata vile umesimama hapo i can shoot you na ukikataa nitakufunga hutawaienda kenya so it was hard for me so nikakubali tu nikaenda kufanya kwa nyumba mm. and then in that house nilipitia mateso mengi as in there was no enough food uh, i was being given one spoon of rice dry rice there's no breakfast one spoon as in the kawaida small spoons we used to eat the this serving spoon the serving spoon yeah just dry rice there is no breakfast there is no supper it was just only lunch and I could take that, that one spoon of rice uh, na maji for one year and one month. That's how I survived. And then it was, it was not really a nice experience in that area. So uh, after that, coming to Kenya, um, it was not easy. I became sick. That's why they allowed me to come back to Kenya. Mm. So after talking to my boss, he told me um, such and uh, such a date you'll be going back to Kenya. Mm. And on that day, I prepared myself, and uh, he came and took me to the uh, airport. After Kunweka Airport, he just left me there with nothing. No payment. No payment. No nothing. And remember. 
I've been working and I'm sick. I'm totally sick. So I'm like, I'm going home. What, how, how am I going to survive? Huh? So kitu ikanikujia tu, ikaniambia, just go and report your mdosi to the, to the people. There were some policemen in the, in, the, in the airport. So I went and reported my boss. They called him. He came back. Mm -hmm. Then after coming back, so unajua nilikuwa na safari. My air ticket was cancelled. Safari ka cancelliwa. So we started mambo ya kesi kwa police. And At this time you're still in the Middle East. Yes, I'm still in the Middle East. It was not good. So after kufanya kesi, now mudosi alikuja akakasirika. Ananiambia, why are you doing this to me? Hapo yeah. utanitambua. Hey, and I'm there, I'm just like, God, just help me. After that, nikambiwa, and it was a long story, I'm just cutting it yeah, short. Yeah. So mdosi uh, akambiwa, anipepesa, then alikata. Mm. We went back to the nearest police station. So Hule, in any person time frame? F yeah, from uh, one year and one month. Like you're not being paid on a monthly basis i was not i was not paid on monthly basis so you missed your salary for a year for a year one Be year and one month yeah because i was telling him to pay me and ananiambia no for us we pay ladies wakienda nyumbani so the day you'll be going home is the day that i'll pay you and he didn't pay me Wait, so you can even work there for five years with no pay up until the day you'll come back home that's when you'll be paid yeah cumulatively yeah and they don't do, those how people don't pay how is that even pay. practical as in okay just, just, just keep on. Just yeah. So after, after that, ilikuwa ni kesi, and then after kufanya hiyo kesi, nikaambiwa, uh, you are going to go back to Kenya again. That was on a Wednesday. Yeah. Tukafanya kesi on a Thursday. And then on Friday, I'm being told, going back to Kenya. I was given around 150 Kenya shillings the Kenya. So... Nika 150 as in 100 bob and 50 or 150? 150, uh, 150,000 yeah, okay. za Kenya. Right. So nika in a room, I'm, I'm being told, una safiri on a Friday. And remember on that Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, I didn't eat anything. They just locked me up in the cell without anything. And nikiwa bado kwa your cell, I was praying. I was praying, and I think during that time, Mungu alikuwa na nipitishia kwa kufast. I was fasting. Okay. So after Friday kufika, I was told I will go home in the morning. After morning kufika, I'm not seeing anyone. In the afternoon, I'm not seeing anyone. In the evening at 7, I'm not seeing anyone. And then, ikafika around 10 p.m. That's when they are coming to call me. At, who is Rosemary? I told them. I'm here. Mm. Wakaniambia, you are now ready kusafiri. Come out. Mm. And I was asking myself, kwa nini usiku? Mm. And they told me in the morning. Mm. Nikatoka and, and then tukaenda kwa police uh, office. I was sitting on a bench and that policeman was sitting one meter away. Mm -hmm. Me. Yeah. He was looking at me and he was telling me, uh, you are going back to Kenya and uh, if you look behind, and I looked behind, akaniambia there is a police officer there, atakikisha umechange pesa yako na umefika Kenya vizuri. Oh, so nilikuwa nimefurai. And then nasikia, the Lord is talking to me, ananiambia, don't be happy. Uyo police officer ambaye akonyuma yako, amehongwa, na uko katikati ya vita vikali. So jiandai. Lakini mimi ni mungu wako, nitakusaidia, usijali. So after that, ikafika 12, 12 a.m. Naambiwa, mudose anakuja akupeleke kwa airport. I just asked that police officer, huyu mudosi amenitendea haya mabaya yote. Na it's, it's the same mudosi unanipatia niende na ye kwa airport. It can't happen. Mm. Kanyambiwa usijali, atakufikisha. So the boss came, nikambiwa just come out, enda kwa gari, tuanze safari. So I went to the to, to Kwagari to Kansas Safari. After 15 minutes, yeah. um, iyo nini, iyo gari kakuje kasimama mahali and nasikia wakiongea in Arabic. Na mungu wakaniambia, 
sikiza vile wanaongea lakini usifanye chochote okay. so after talking in arabic nasikia wanasema nataka uh, ule, ule mdosa anaambia the police officer nataka uwe huyu msichana hapa ndani ya gari na tutamweka kwa gunia mm. ile iko pale kwa boot kwa gari so these things nasikia zikiingilia hapa zikafika hapa nika nikachanganyikiwa so i'm asking god nitatokaje kwa hili janga mm. lakini Mungu alikuwa na mimi hakuniacha mm -hmm. so after that Mungu akaniambia just act sigari imesimama and then akaniambia look look outside unaweza ona mwangaza and the place was dark huku na huku kuko dark and nikaangalia hivi nikaona mwangaza mbele kidogo like one uh, 20 meters away okay so, yeah so okay. Mungu akaniambia just run when they go home, Mwangaza not a sidika. Mm -hmm. So, this is how you're able to yeah, escape. In. That's how I was able to ex escape. Mm -hmm. Nan Kasaido and some police officers that were on duty. Na even Lifika Kenya. Okay, and I think it's very important for me to mention that much as it is Entertainment Thursday, yeah. it's so quite important to look into such stories because I mean this is what forms your story. This is why you are singing, you know, anyway because of what God did did, did for you. Yeah. And again, also like I'm saying, it's really quite important for us to talk about it because it's one of those stories that we've covered even just as a media fraternity mm -hmm. of some of those issues that ail our girls and women and even some men, you know, in the Middle East. And over time, we've had the state, particularly through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs talking about looking into ways to which we can sort of like assist and help girls that actually go out there and help because as we know as a country human resource is our biggest revenue in, in terms of tax so why not looking for ways to aid and assist them but then before you come to entertainment there's something that you mentioned mm -hmm. and I want you to talk a bit about it because the person who recruited you mm -hmm. was this person a Kenyan he was an Arabic woman. An Arabic woman. Yeah. All right. And in that office, could go an agent from Kenya. Yeah. Uh -huh. And tafsiri because by that time I was not understanding Arabic. Uh -huh. So that lady is the one who was going to tell me everything there. Okay. Yeah. I hear you. Mm. So this is part of what oriented and informed you kutoa uh, hi nyimbo. Yeah, yeah. Because of the machungu likuwa and you yeah. felt like if I could revenge, yeah. I could. Nilikuwa na machungu mengi sana sana. Yeah. But I thank God, yaliisha. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So when did you release this song? Was it in the same 2021? Ama? Okay, going to Jordan, it was uh, in 2015 mm -hmm. and 2016. Okay. So this thing, uh, and I'm coming to release the song in 2021. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, 2021. Yeah. So 2021 is when you released um, Nisamehe. Yeah, Nisamehe. All right. Yeah. And was this your first song? Yeah, it was my first song. Oh. And I, I have uh, one album of, s of six songs, and I've started working on the second album mm -hmm. with one song. All right, it is just some seconds to 8 a.m. I want you to hold it at that particular point. You're due for a uh, break at this point, but we record with plenty more of this conversation, just trying to tie the stories that link to this music that you listen to when it comes to the music space. Time for that breather. Stay with us. Exactly five minutes past the top of the hour. You're still on Good Morning Kenya. We continue our pace with the day's conversation, looking at the space of women, particularly in the music industry. I'm still holding court with my guest, that is Rose Buyanzi, who is a gospel artist, of course, talking to us about her personal story, her personal journey, and what just oriented her to the music industry, and specifically the gospel space. Rose, before we took that break, we'll uh, uh, Kusu Nisamehe as your first song in 2021. Mm -hmm. So this is the first uh, muziki. Yeah. 2021. So you've been in the space for like two, about mm -hmm. two years and some, some months. Yeah. How has it been like for you? Okay, it has not that been uh, so easy. Mm. Yeah, unajua kila kitu, you have to work extra yeah. to see it working on. So, I jakuwa raisi as in kuna some challenges okay una, una release mziki and then unakosa pesa kufanya video and uh, it's not been easy 
finances in your challenge <laughs> everyone i keep saying everyone in the arts um and music specifically uh, mm -hmm. the issue of finances is always one of the biggest problem but again yeah. unasema kwamba haijakuwa rahisi mm. kwa mtazamo wako kwanza kama mwanamke imekuwa vipi you know why i ask that is because mara mingi especially ukiongea na artists in the in the music industry mm -hmm. They would good number of people would say that women or females are not consistent. Mm. But mara mingi mtu ana huwa anasahau kwamba especially kama mwanamke unaweza kuona take breaks kwa sababu mpingine umeenda kuzaa unalea vitu mm. kama hivyo. Mm. So kwako imekuwa vipi in respect to just kam, kama mwanamke kwa mm. the music uh, industry or the gospel industry? Okay kwangu haijakuwa ile mbaya sana azin nimekuwa najua mm. ku ku balance. Ku balance as in sometimes unafaa ukuwa unafanya kitu fulani yeah. and sometimes unafaa ukuwe kwa studio yeah. so unajikuta lazima ukuwa unajua jinsi ya kujipanga so kwangu haijakuwa sijaona shida sana kwa kujipanga as in, in the studio and in the music kwa kazi kitu kama hiyo mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so challenge kubwa ndio kwa pale kwa finances finances and then uko pale umetoa mziki wako mzuri but sasa ili ufikie mataifa kuna ile challenge hauna mtu wa kukushika mkono mm -hmm. ili wimbo wako ufikie mataifa mm -hmm. so unajikuta umetoa wimbo na uko huko nyuma hujui utafikaje kule mbele mm -hmm. so that is another challenge mm -hmm. ukisema mtu kukushika mkono is this in the aspect of a mentor or someone in marketing someone in marketing someone in marketing yeah. so i mean for this trend half years mimi kwa kifanya vipi basi kwa mtazamo wako okay mimi nimekuwa okay nikirelease ni music i just share on the social yeah on the socials okay some will subscribe some will not some yeah sasa ndo imekuwa challenge mm -hmm. yeah na sasa hizi i mean two years simi aka kidogo vile mm. Now that you know there's a challenge in marketing mm -hmm. and, and and it's actually a very big challenge in for people in in the arts and music specifically because mara nyingi we they tend or you tend to rely on the social media and of course social media has come as a tool for marketing mm -hmm. but it's the only tool for marketing and you know why it's a challenge because good number would say that well artists sometimes don't even want to invest mm. or they don't see the need of investing in a marketing team mm -hmm. leave alone the socials wewe kama msanii wa gospel have you ever thought of just um, looking into ways of getting a marketing team a team that will market for you kama wataenda physically or using you know the avenues they use on the social medias have you thought of investing in such a team yeah i've thought of that but jinsi ya kufikia ya kufikia that pia. yeah jinsi ya kuwafikia tena uh -huh. yeah ndio imekuwa pia another, imekuwa another issue another challenge yeah. do you think this is one of those things that a uh, good number of artists wanna miss yes marketing yeah marketing aside from kuwafikia then what more can artists do nini ni msanii anaweza fanya more than just kusema kuwafikia imekuwa ngumu the, the other thing msanii anaweza fanya ni ajitume mm -hmm. atoe kitu quality mm. you know akitoa kitu quality obvious mmoja atasikia mwingine asikia sema eh umesikia hii and then hiyo kitu ita mm. itaenda mm. na yende na yende mm. so kazi yako pia ita, ita market for you yeah. by, itself. by itself speaking of quality rose from your perspective and analysis mm -hmm. as someone in the industry and gospel to be very specific mm -hmm. do you think the quality of music has sort of like changed from how it was then to how it is now yeah. ama iko tu vile ilikuepo it has changed how lingana so? na kitambo uh -huh. and now mm. the quality may change may change kivipi as in wasanii wengi wamejitokeza saizi mm. and some just sing because singing is there mm -hmm. but wengine wanaimba because it is a call from god mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then unaona ni kama content kidogo imebadilika kulingana vile ilikuepo pale awali. Yeah, pale awali wasanii walikuwa naimba kitu as in kitu real. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. As in hata wewe mwenyewe ukisikia unasikia umeguswa. Yeah. Yeah. Nini basi imefanya ika change kabisa because you see we keep saying eh God is the same yesterday today and every day. Mm. And 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 you see if you describe yourself as someone in the gospel space whether as a gospel minister or a gospel artist mm. it just should tell you that you're drawing inspiration from either the word or God or the Holy Spirit. Like there's a God inclination in it. Mm. Na kama Mungu ni ni vile alikuepo awali sasa na siku zijazo mm. mbona basi ukiangalia wewe mwenyewe uko kwa hii industry mbona unaona ni kama hiyo quality imebadilika 
that mtu ataimba tu for the sake of of singing okay imebadilika kwa sababu mtu anataka tu as in aimbe aonekane ya kwamba anaani anaenda somewhere mm -hmm. but actually hakuna mali anaenda as in anaimba tu kuimba kuko mm -hmm. haimbi kitu ambacho Mungu ameweka ndani yake mm -hmm. Yeah. So inspiration yako ni nini basi we kama mwenye anaimba content as is. Okay, my inspiration is okay, just sing ile kitu ambayo Mungu ameweka ndani yako. Nasema wewe sasa, wewe what what inspires you? What was it the kind of um, content that you release mm -hmm. ama muziki ambayo wewe unaandika? Mm -hmm. Nini haswa inspires how you write your your songs? Okay, my songs huwa zinakuja tu as in sam Mungu analetea na zingine zinakuja tu zenyewe yeah zinakuja zenyewe kwa ni environment vitu umepitia what exactly vitu nimepitia na zingine naweza kuwa nimelala and then Mungu analetea wimbo naimba na we naamka as in huo usiku naamka naandika chini anaweza analetea like kama just a chorus so mimi ni kuwa need the whole of the song sasa mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your let your unaweza is your latest song is it yeah mm -hmm. my latest song tell us more about it okay unaweza ilikuja like mungu akiwa hapa duniani kuna mambo mengi alifanya mm -hmm. aliponya viwete vipofu waliona ani alifanya miujiza mingi sana mm -hmm. ndio maana huu wimbo unaweza nikautoa mm -hmm. kumsifu Mungu kwa yale yote ambayo amekuwa mm -hmm. al, alikuwa anafanya akiwa mm -hmm. hapa duniani mm -hmm. yeah ukiangalia nyimbo zako zingine ambazo umetoa so umesema kwamba there's inspiration from the holy spirit mm -hmm. na pia vitu ambazo umepitia yeah. so aside from your story from the gulf mm -hmm. okay or living in the middle east mm -hmm. ni nini haswa ingine in your environment ama things that you've gone through then you may inspire some of those songs that you've written okay kulingana na mapito pia mapito mtu amepitia gani gani yako tunaongelelea wewe sasa ya yeah, kuongelea yangu sasa yani mimi yeah. ni mtu nimepitia apart from kwenda yeah. uh, uh, middle east yeah. mapito tu hapa Kenya mm -hmm. as in una, unafika mali unaona things are not working mm -hmm. like there's a song i did uh, unikumbuke ilikuja tu and then Mungu akaniambia so many people give up So this uh, sing this song at least you encourage those people wakuwe na hope. Yaani Mungu awakumbuke. Ya yeah, kwa magonjwa kwa nini ya yeah, vitu kama hizo. So basically to see story yako peke yako peke as a person but also from your environment what people go through yeah. the issues that you see yeah. a good number of people going through they also inform the kind of content that you create. Yeah and then kuna this song Adonai. Yeah, that's also one of your songs? Yeah one of my songs. This song ilikuja nikiwa pale kitandani mm. after coming from Jordan. Nilikuja na magonjwa mengi sana. Mm. And then after being treated, naambiwa you have eye cancer. So I'm I'm there in the bed. Sasa okay, friends wakisikia hivyo uko na kansa, wanaogopa, wanakutenga. So there's so much I went through. Mm. So nikawa kwa, kwa kitanda nimelala. And then Mungu analetea huu wimbo. Ananiambia I will heal you from cancer na huu wimbo utakuwa ni kama ushuhuda wako. So Adonai akaniambia kwamba mimi Mungu nimeponya watu wengi the lame the blind. Sasa hii yako sitakosa kukusaidia na upone. Actually it's a long story <laughs> but nashukuru Mungu I'm free of that cancer mm -hmm. na akaniponya na akanipa huu wimbo adonai. Mm -hmm. mm. Well said. Mm -hmm. And you've also won the best gospel artist in Vihiga Extravaganza 2022. Yeah. Of course ilifanya uka feel poor. <laughs> but you know the this awards. Mm -hmm. You know why I brought it up is because mara mingi mm -hmm. especially in the gospel space we've talked about how at some point um the gospel industry is sort of like transition and it became became more like an award system as opposed to a ministry system mm -hmm. especially in the time tulikuanga na groove awards mm -hmm. that's why it died off mm -hmm. when you look at this award system kwa mtazamo wako kama msani do you think uh, or do you feel uh, that this award systems are good to encourage msani ama sometimes what to move away from actually singing the word and the content as is but then you're just singing for the sake mm -hmm. of an award 
Mm -hmm. How do you see it? Okay, for me to participate in that uh, uh, 2022 uh, Viga mm -hmm. extravaganza, mm -hmm. I was not going there to win the award. Okay. I was just going there for exposure. Mm -hmm. And during that time, Mungu aka work to Mambozake and aka fanya ile kitu and I became the winner. So, sikwenda pale because I just want to win that award. Because unaweza win that award na kuna mali itakupeleka. But if you have God, you carry God, that award can make you go far. Yeah. So then you're saying that if I took kuko unafanya muziki ndio tu kujue watu wa recognize you can get awards but especially if you're doing gospel do it with the idea of spreading spreading the gospel yes before we exit this space let's talk a bit about the aspect of mentorship because what you listen my quality may change mm -hmm. then i'm inclined to think that sometimes it's because unapata we don't um am in this kind of dispensation Wasani wengi may not have mentors and sometimes someone does not see the need of having a mentor because someone will say, see I'm talented, I am skilled, why do I need a mentor? Do you think it's necessary and important to be having a mentor and why? Yeah, it is important to have a mentor because ukianza mziki, there are so many things huh? utapitia na during that time you need a mentor akueleze fanya hivi fanya hivi so that you can go far but ukisema unataka kujifanya vitu wewe mwenyewe without that mentorship then hakuna mali utaenda mm -hmm. it's very difficult mm. yeah do you have your mentor yourself yes i have a mentor mm -hmm. yeah. okay mm -hmm. amekuwa kiku guide in terms of how you write your content in terms of proof checking your content how has it how has that one looked like for you yeah amekuwa kinsaidia Okay, most of the things I'm equipped in idea because Niki Nikianza could record me. I didn't know anything. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't know anything. But I thank God, mm -hmm. nearly come up to meet this pro producer, mm -hmm. and it was at easy. Mm -hmm. And I can I can you mm -hmm. If you want to record, you do this and this and this. Mm -hmm. And I can find you easy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well said. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for your time, Rose, and also just for sharing with us your story mm -hmm. and just making an input in the in industry as Santa Sana. I have been speaking to Rose Buyanzi, a gospel artist, of course, just talking to us about her journey in the music space and particularly in the gospel industry. We take another very quick breather, but Good Morning Kenya is not yet done. We continue with plenty more after this break.